Good evening and welcome to the Mudisa Network. In the show tonight, thought leaders respond to the growing socio-economic problems in South Africa and propose solutions. Dr. Yakub Abba Omar explains what the Intulamiti scenarios are all about. And later, outspoken education expert Professor Jonathan Janssen offers ideas on how to energize the ailing education system. Welcome. The current situation in South Africa was far from the imagination of citizens when the country finally shook off the cloak of apartheid in 1994. Many people, especially in the black community, voting for the first time cried tears of joy when finally they installed their government led by President Nelson Mandela. They dreamt of dignity restored, bright future for their children, opportunities for a better life, and a nation at peace with itself. Over time, especially in the past 10 years, they have seen their dreams turn into a nightmare. With streets burning, youth hurting without jobs, tensions between races rising and corruption scandals becoming a daily occurrence. The joy of 1994 after centuries of suffering has become the shock of 2018 with the population up in arms against the escalating problems of poverty in the communities and corruption amongst the political elites. But some individuals are doing something about it. A think tank has been set up called Injula Meti 2030 Scenarios, which has brought different stakeholders together, and one of them is former activist, public servant, ambassador, and now executive with the Banking Association of South Africa, Dr. Yakub Abba Omar. And uh, I'm inviting you to also be part of our conversation using the social media hashtag, the Mudise Network, as you follow our conversation here on the program. Dr. Omar, a pleasure to catch up with you, Abba. Thank you. I appreciate Tim. that. Really uh, good to see you. Yeah, and I, I, you know, you, the scenarios that you've put together in Hulamiti, the names are interesting. I'll get to the names in, in a moment. But I just want you to give me a background to how you ended up with this scenario planning effort. Sure. Um, you know, we've had a few, quite a few scenarios in South Africa. Uh, I've been personally involved with uh, people like uh, Joel Nechatenze, uh, in the scenarios that the presidency did during uh, Becky's period 2002, uh, which was called Memories of the Future, and then in 2007, The Future We Chose. Um, and, you know, we've been asked by a lot of people since then, uh, especially during the Zuma administration, uh, how about having a scenario exercise that's open-ended, that looks at some of the critical questions of the day. So we were very glad that uh, at the same time, uh, executives from Anglo-American were also saying that, you know, we can't allow the situation to prevail. You remember where we were in the last couple of years. Um, and how can we look at the future? Uh, and hence, we arrived at the scenarios. I'm really personally pleased that they chose the name Indlula Miti because I had been um, uh, inspired by a story of uh, one of the East African kings who in m hundreds of years ago sent a giraffe mm. to, one of the, uh, to the emperor of China at the time as a gift and said, you know, the giraffe, because it, the, the name translates above the trees, is seen as an animal that looks after the country because mm. it's able to look out for danger way into the distance. And we thought that's a name that's quite fitting. So I proposed that, and uh, people immediately accepted it. And so it's, uh, your, it's your name? Yeah, <laughs> you I know. <laughs> Some charo from Durban that has come up with yeah, this yeah, good yeah, name. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah. We should have had a mini giraffe here, just yes. to make it more interesting. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> but, but I wonder, what happened then to the uh, scenarios that you planned and you speculated on then in right. the early 2000s? Yeah. I mean, obviously, you don't just put I guess together and, then and throw away the document right, you know, working yeah. towards that. So what yeah. happened to that? Yeah, we have learned a lot from those experiences. I think the 2002 ones were the very first kind of scenarios that were done at the government level. And they helped a lot of government departments uh, to do some long-term planning. The 2007-2008 one, unfortunately, I think with the whole Polikwane, uh, in fact, one of the things was that the scenarios did predict a Polikwane happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and the kind of situation that we saw. Uh, it was uh, from 2000, 
uh, the scenarios was from 2007 to 2025. Uh, and I think some people may even remember the scenarios. Uh, you know, it, it was in Kalakata scenario. The, which uh, one? The, the uh, 2007 uh, one. Yeah. And, and and what transpired as uh, a consequence has come true. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. In, so in many ways, you could yeah. call what what we've just experienced, or we are in the middle of what the yeah. Kalakata situation. Um, uh, it, no, in Kalakata it was slightly different, but the yeah. Masvungo scenario, where it looks at a family drama like the drama yeah. series. Yeah. Uh, looking at, uh, I'm mean, sorry, Muvango. Yeah. Um, and looking at uh, deceit and issues of values and, and so forth is what we think has really transpired in the last decade. So the family of the ANC stabbing each other in the back, mm. loss of morale uh, mm. and loss of morality. Um, and then there was also, you know, the Nkalakata one was one where we we're saying that we needed a bold leadership that came okay. in and you yes. know, that captured the that energy. Yes. Yeah, and that's what we're hoping would have happened, but unfortunately that didn't occur. Okay, so, well, yeah. we are here now. You, you have not only an interest in the fact that you participated in the scenario planning and even proposed the name, right. but it's a, what one may call maybe a lifelong involvement, yes. especially at least in your adult life. Yes. As I said in the intro, as a political activist, and you've also worked in the government, and you've also represented the country overseas. So right. you, you've, you know, just a brief sure. understanding of your involvement in the struggle for change sure. as mm -hmm. well as the stuff of a new government in South Africa. Just right. tell me a bit about that. Sure. Um, you know, I've been sort of socially committed from a very young age, uh, from a very uh, high school days. You know, uh, I grew up uh, when I was at high school uh, in the period when 1976 was happening, uh, when the when the Biko murder happened, and these were very formative years mm. for me. And mm. then uh, I happened to be connected with people like the two Jay Naidus uh, quite uh, fortuitously uh, and then connected with students at what used to be called the University of Durban Westville, got involved in the struggle there, became part of the SRC and then was elected onto the national student body with uh, Joe Pashla, Tiago Moseneke, Israeli Mkise. So a lot of the people that are playing leadership roles today, we, we were all students together traveling around the country, mm. organizing the mm. campuses. Uh, I then became part of the ANC underground and worked quite effectively there, I think, until 1985 when, as happens to a lot of underground units, there's some slip-ups and had to go into exile. I spent time in Mozambique, in Angola, Zimbabwe, Zimb uh, Zambia, and uh, also went for training, uh, as I say, the pilgrimage to Moscow mm. that everyone does. Mm. Came back in 1990, worked with the Department of Information and Publicity, and then 1994 went into government. So that's, in a nutshell, my role. For yeah, me. and of course, uh, you know, from 94, as I said, also became an ambassador. Yeah, in, uh, uh, and I remember, you know, so many chance conversations we were yes, having, yeah. imagining a South Africa that was going to deliver the goods. So right. I think I was right to say, you know, in 94, we thought everything was going to be paradise. Yes. Uh, yeah. That people were going to create that. Yeah, and, right, and I yeah. suppose those who know, yeah. and participated in bringing about the change are extremely disappointed yes, to yeah. see what's going on now. A yeah. daily occurrence of uh, service delivery protests, yes, for instance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I wonder whether we're going to get to a point where we don't have those. Right. Let's talk about the process that right. you went into, the way you approached this scenario yes, plan. Yeah. What happened? How did you come to Yeah. That? So, you know, it was in a really interesting exercise. As I mentioned, the Anglo-American guys were also being to want to have a conversation. and. They were saying, look, we need to look at how do we get to an economic Kodesa. Uh, and we agreed, but we said, let's use the methodology of scenarios. And so we convened uh, quite a large group of uh, people from trade unions, corporate sector, government, NGOs, and so forth. And we said, if you were to look at the future of South Africa, say going up to 2030, what would be your central concern? And it was interesting, across the board, business, labor, communist, liberal, et cetera, all said that we need to get social cohesion right. They were saying if we don't get that right, even if we have good growth rates and uh, improvements in, in the economy, etc., our country seems to keep tripping up on the issue of social cohesion. So as you're saying, you know, 1994, there was a sense of unity, a nation-building exercise coming about, but we didn't pay adequate attention to that. So often the fractures would emerge and we'd, you know, we'd, we'd what uh, Bishop uh, Malusi Mwana was saying, we have silent non-agreements, mm. and then we just allow these things to accumulate. 
So the TRC, we kind of like went through a process, but there's still a lot of non-agreements along race, class, gender, rural urban divides. So we said, how can we achieve social cohesion by 2030 that can then ensure that the economy can work, that constitutionalism works out, that a national identity develops that makes us a winning nation then? Well, I'm talking to Dr. Yagub Abba Omar about the Indrulamiti scenario, social cohesion emerging as one of the key issues they are concerned about. We'll be looking at the respective uh, scenarios that they have uh, speculated on and are painting about the future of our country and, of course, the current situation. Our discussion will continue in a moment. Let's hear from you. Hashtag the Mudisa Network.